Okay, our next speaker is uh, Danny from Intel. Answer that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, um, my name is Danny. I'm from Intel Network, Network Platform Groups and the, uh, the Data Center Group. Um, my colleague, Yi Yang, who cannot join for personal reasons, so I will be um, present his um, portion um, uh, on, behalf of, on behalf of him. And my talk, my, my talk is today is to build a high perform NSH based certified chain solution within FIDO and Open Daylight. So, it's not just an uh, Intel effort, it's a group effort. Uh, so I want to thank you, the Hongjun and Kisburn. Those are two major contributors to FIDO NSH SFC project, and also Brad Johnson, uh, who is the uh, um, SFC at Open Delight and SFC at Open OV project as a as a PTL, and Anna, who is from Intel, does lots of uh, um, you know uh, automation testing in FIDO community. Okay. So it's agenda today. Uh, basically, I'm going to cover three um, main topics. The first is about certified chaining overview, and then I will um, spend uh, um, lots of time to introduce FIDO's NSH SFC plugin project. And I will cover the internal architect architecture, as well as the features, um, as well as the performance and some performance analysis. Um, then I will introduce the functional and the performance test we enable NSHFC to work with the CSIT framework in FIDO. And the last topic is about the uh, um, Open Data SFC uh, to integrate with the uh, WBP and NSSFC to ensure the country plane can work with the data plane. And the last item is the summary. So this page actually introduces the third function chain. So what is third function chain? Third function chain basically is to stitch different network service in a particular order. So let's look, take a look at this uh, uh, diagram. If you have three client, one, two, three, four, to talk to a server, basically, if you have the classification or certified function chain policy, you can force the different flows go through, travels through different server function in, a, in, in particular order. So in, here in data plane, we have four different types of uh, component. The first one is a classifier, which actually classify the incoming traffic and place a label, SFC label, on the packet. And uh, based on that the label, once they classify forward packet to the server function folder, server function folder can use the, that, the, the information, chain information at the label to determine what next hop will be. So it could be a next, next server function folder, it could be a server function. So in terms of that server function encapsulation, there are lots of different options. So previously, there are people, um, orchestrator use VLAN, VixLAN, or GRE, or MPLS as a certain function label, or what we call a certain function encapsulation. But now in IETF SFC working group, the network service header is the choice to act as next generation certain function encapsulation. So for those legacy certain functions, as you can see here, if it does not support the new, pro, new third function encapsulation like NSH, it needs a proxy here. Sit between, sorry. Sit between the third function folder and the third function. So this guy actually manipulates the third function uh, encapsulation on behalf of third function. So now in ITF, the NSH is a divorce standard, even though it is not a RFC at, at this point. So basically, NSH header is an additional header added before the original frame, and it contains three um, different portions of the information. The basic header, which contains the version information, and uh, learns the learns of this NSH header, the empty type information, as well as the next protocol. And the second portion is the server pass ID and the service index. Those are used by server function forwarder to determine to forward traffic. Uh, to the third function or third function next generation, uh, next hop third function generation. So the, the comparing to other third function encapsulation, the NSH actually carry the metadata. So this is the biggest difference of the NSH. So if you have metadata, say, if the classifier um, can know the tenant information, it would you know, package the tenant information inside the metadata 
then when the packet goes to the third function, the third function can use this metadata. Okay. Say you, have, you can place the subscriber information, whatever DP, DPI information into metadata. Then third function will further, or third function does not need to reuse, to, to reclassify re, um, the packet. So there are a couple of different SFS use cases across telco and a data center network. So from top to bottom, I list the four you know, common use case. The first one is the GI line, in mobile core network. Basically, um, if you have EPC set up, and the, the traffic from your uh, devices need to go to the internet, then the GI line is a point that need to perform lots of, um, you know, network service applied to the, the original traffic. So in, in the GI line use case, there are a couple of different server functions Third, sorry, third functions, like, like here, and it actually needs lots of, um, you know, dyna dynamic is there. For example, you want to um, change the order of the third function, or you may want to add a new third function to a third function, or you want to remove a third function to a existing third function. So this kind of, this kind of um, JLI use, use case is actually a dynamic server chain. And for broadband network, it, it, it is the same thing. So for example, if, we, if the BNG broadband gateway terminates the PPPO traffic and send the Ethernet, tra Ethernet traffic to the internet, they also need to get, go through a server chain. And typically, you would need to go through the uh, DNS, firewall, load balancer, those kind of service. And for CPE, especially cloud CPE, and in this use case, people want to, I mean, the operator want to make the um, CPE uh, to be, layer two CPE to be as thin as possible, then they can move those, the compli complicated network service to the cloud environment, where you need the firewall, ACL, NAT, those kind of typical search function to build a search function chain before the traffic go to the internet. And then, it, and then in, in the data center, it's also in the internet gateway to ensure the traffic between internet and your servers to go through the server front chain. So basically, if you look at those four use cases, server front chain is a gateway for different types of network, no matter it's a wireless or data center network or fixed band network. So what is the uh, functionality of the NSHSV plugin internals? So basically, this is the typical packet format that NSSFC uh, manipulates. The pink portion are typical layer two, layer three, layer four packet, no matter it's the inner header or outer header. And the, the green portion is the NSH header, which is added before the, your original frame, but it's not a legal layer two frame. So in order to um, ensure the typical network to, to, to be able to handle this packet, you need to add a transport. Now, in the NSH draft in IETF, there are three types of different transport, VXLAN, GPE, Ethernet, and the GRE. So in our current implementation, in, in FIDO, it, it only uses VXLAN GPE as, as, as I show here, uh, red part, as a, as a transport to carry the NSH header. So, if, so in, in the NSHSF plugin, you, as you can see, we ensure the NSHFC can act as four different types of graph nodes, which are NSH classifier to act as classify proxy, and the NSH input and the NSH wearable apps. So essentially, the NSHFC um, plugin just manipulates two tables. NSH map table and NSH entry table. The NSH entry table uh, enables NSHFC can act as certifying folder as well as uh, uh, classifier. And for NSH map, enables the NSHFC to act as NSH wearable VNFs as well as proxy. So the VXLAN GP uh, graph node actually co uh, work with NSH. Uh, SFC plugin to ensure a proper VXLAN GPE uh, transport can be added before the NSH header. So those two, the, those two, uh, you know, block here are legacy uh, late native VBP graph node, which actually manipulates the, the layer two, layer three, layer four headers. 
So let's, we, let's take an example. For example, if I want the NSSFC to act as classifier, the, the original frame comes in, and the VBP graph node just do typical layer two, layer three, layer four packet processing. And once it, it needs to send the packet to go through the front chain, the packet, sorry, the packet actually go to the, um, the, the go to the, this, this uh, sorry, what's that? So it goes to the NSSFC, which actually adds the NSSFC header before, or before the original frame, then forwards the, to the Wixland GP graph node to add the Wixland GP header, then transmit to the wire. So if you want this uh, NSSFC to act as a certified folder, basically the packet comes in, which is a turning, pop, turning packet based on GP NSH, turning, turning, turning packet, it actually does the uh, outer header processing. Then Wixland GP graph will decapsulate the packet. Then the NSH header sent to this component to determine what the next hop will be. Once it's done, it's sent to the Wixland GP to do re-encapsulation and transmit to the wire. So it's, uh, in current uh, uh, NSSFC plugin, basically four different types of data plane component are both supported. Classify, certify, and forwarder, proxy, and NSA aware of NF. Okay. So this is a typical use case of NSSFC, and uh, we just uh, collocate the NSSFC um, with the serve functions. Say so in current VBP, it supports different serve functions like uh, firewall, like a NAT, like a load balancer. So if you want to um, place a VPP, VPP inside a container or in, inside a VM to enable it to act as a VNF or container of VNF, you can definitely leverage VPP. But if you want to chain those VNF or container, containerize the VNF as a server on chain, you need to ensure those VNF are NSH aware. So in order to do that, we collocate an SFC, which act as a, which is configured as a proxy to, with the, the, the legacy uh, server functions. So basically, when packet comes in, the, trap, the, the packet goes through the graph node in VPP, you know, uh, the layer two, layer three, layer four, and then go to the Wixlan GP graph node to do decap solution. And the decap solution packet will be sent to NSSFC, actually to strip off the NSSFC header. So then it recirculated back to the original internet input graph node then it, this guy only processed in the packet. So it follows the regular path to forward traffic to the net, to file one node, or those kind of network service, and that them to do the real job. So once the packet are processed, those, those uh, net server graph node send back, back to the NSSFC. Then it will add the original NSH SFC header before the original frame, then send it to Wixland GP to add a Wixland GP header, then transmit it to the wire. So this way, for those server functions, which are not NSA-aware, you can just enable them to be NSA-aware by collocating the proxy and the server function together. And going forward, we are going to enable real NSA-aware server function, which means we need those server functions to be real NSA-aware. Uh, that, that means that for each packet, when the VPP process them, it needs to add those per packet metadata, especially NSH relevant metadata to the packet. Then with this, this packet, with the metadata sent to the third function, it can use the metadata. For example, it will classify as the subscriber information to the NSH header, and then once the NSH SFC uh, graph node pass that packet and the encapsulate that packet into the per packet metadata, those third function can use this metadata to enable them to actually do a better job. Okay. So NSSFC plugin is, uh, is an um, active project in, in, in FIDO. And uh, I'm actually at kind of the PTL of the project. We have three releases um, recently, uh, from 1609 to, to 1701 to 1704. So 1609, we're in the basic of certain function for the capability. And, uh, and also, uh, thanks for VPP's uh, plugin framework, we can easily um, you know, plug the NSSFC plugin into the VPP 
and enable the Honeycomb to control them uh, via the NetConf interface. And also, we ensure ODL to work with this uh, VBP and NSSFC. I'm going to talk about the detail about, about integration between ODL, SFC, and the VBP uh, based, based uh, uh, in a server on chain data plane. So in, in 1701 release, we had the classified the proxy. Um, and also, we added the integration test to the Honeycomb the ODL. So going forward, for any additional feature you added to the uh, NSSA plugin, it will be automatically tested with the ODL. So this way, we can ensure contemplated plan can work together. And the recent 1704 release, which, as I mentioned, we collocate the proxy and the third function together. Specifically, we enable the SNET, which stands for stateful net, to ensure um, the, the SNET um, you know, component in, in VBP can be used in a container or in a VM to act as an SHA aware of VNF. So we also enable the MD type 2 support um, because, as I mentioned, the NSH actually supports two different types of metadata. Metadata type 1 is a fixed size metadata, and MD type 2 is a variable size metadata. You can use a TLV type length value to describe your metadata. And I'll also enable IOM over SH and in, ensure the NSHFC in, integrated to the CSIT automation test work framework in the FIDO. And the, in, in, we, we, are, we are working on 1707 release. Basically, um, we, instead of supporting the VIXLAN GPG as the only transport of NSH, we're going to enable other transport like Ethernet. Um, I'm going to talk about why we need it in, in, in the following slide. And the GNIF, which is the um, IETF um, you know, official next generation um, tunneling protocol. And uh, some performance optimization and uh, integration work will be done in this release. Okay. So performance. Um, so when we talk about the enabling features for NSSFC, people will ask, okay, what kind of performance you can achieve within uh, VBP, and in how, how do you uh, compare the performance with the, with the uh, internal stack? So we did a perform testing. So this is the basic test, uh, for, uh, you know, topology for performance. We have two devices. One is the traffic generator and a, a server which actually uh, runs the VPP and with the NSSFC. So the two traffic, uh, the traffic from the, the, uh, the um, traffic sent from port A to port A uh, on, 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 the, on, the, on the DOT, and it loop back, back to, to the traffic generator. And another port actually sent back to also to the DOT, it loop back to the traffic. So we can measure aggregate performance to see if we, 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 we use one core or multi-core, what kind of performance we can achieve. So this is hardware configuration. Basically, we use the Broadwell um, CPU. Uh, it runs at 2.2 gigahertz, and the 10 gig electro, 10 gig network uh, net cache is used. For for software, it's uh, DBDK version is 16.11, uh, and uh, VBP and SSFC and Honeycomb are actually 17.01 release. So in terms of the BIOS configuration, basically it's just a regular configuration, but we turn on the sorry for that. I turn on the Intel speed spec and table boost to ensure when the VBP and the DBDK runs, POMO drive runs in the POMO, uh, POMO the, the highest frequency can be leveraged. Okay. So this page actually is pretty busy. Um, the two charts on the top are classified as well as certified forward performance. And the two charts below as the uh, proxy inbound and the proxy outbound proxy. We use the different pack size, uh, ranging from 72 bytes small pack to the uh, 1K and the, and the jumbo frame, as well as the IMAX profiles. So as you can see here, uh, we run two different types of tests. One is IFC 2544, another is just 100TX, and for this 100TX, what's that? For, for this 102TX, it actually has a packed loss. So for IFC 245, 2544 uh, it actually has no problem. So as you can see here, for small packet, basically we can achieve about five um, gig, gigabit, per, uh, gig, uh, gig, gigabit per second uh, throughput. And, uh, but for, if we, for big packet, so we have 512 or 1K, it can achieve um, a 10 gig line rate. Okay. So 
We also do some perform scaling test. Say, for one core, it can only achieve five gig. How about two core, three core? Does it scale linearly? As you can see here, if we use two cores, the performance at uh, almost um, doubled in com comparison to the, uh, the one, 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 uh, you know, uh, one core performance. And we actually test uh, um, the different um, you know, functionality, classify inbound, uh, outbound proxy certifying folder uh, using different packet. So you, you may ask why we don't use the 6.4 or 6.7.2 but for proxy or certifying folder. The main reason is that the NSH and the baseline GP, those kind of um, tunneling headers add additional uh, you know, uh, headers before NSH, so the packet size increased. Okay. And uh, so, but if you look into the um, performance report in CSI report, you will see for basic layer two forward traffic, layer two kind of set up, it had easily achieved um, close to 13 million, uh, million packet per second performance. So why you, you, you only achieved maybe about roughly um, five, five gig, you know, you know, for example, 4.5 million packet per second throughput. So it, this actually gives uh, um, a lot of a, a insight about the why, why the performance drops. So this is basically layer two cross-connect configuration. As you can see here, basically the traffic generator sends the traffic to DUT1, and DUT1 actually just uh, like, like a typical layer two forward, it receives a packet from a, phys uh, layer, a physical port, and uh, instead of bypassing, in, sorry, instead of it goes through the uh, VPP graph node, it just uh, transmits packet to, uh, to another DUT where the uh, another uh, tank port so actually can, has a best performance. So reusing this layer two cross-connect configuration, uh, we have a layer two XC uh, cross-connect VXLAN test, which actually configure this DUT to do, um, DUT1 to do VXLAN in-cap solution, and this guy do the decap solution. So if 64 byte packet comes in, it's gonna do in-cap solution, and it's gonna do in-cap solution, and loop back the 64 byte back to this traffic generator. As you can see here, Perform jobs from 12.7 to 6.5 because Wixel and GP encapsulation drops performance. As, as you have to first do a basic uh, pay, uh, you know, look, look up in, in the you know, table, and also you need the memory copy to copy unless the Wixel and GP header and alter layer two, layer three, layer four header before the original packet. It actually needs CPU cycles and memory bandwidth. And also we did IP5, IP4 VXLAN testing. It, it also um, dropped from 6.5 to 4, 5.5, um, you know, roughly. So it actually had additional um, uh, work here to do um, pack, uh, you know, uh, table lookup. Because if you want to forward, you need to find out which port will be used to forward traffic. So it needs at least one hash operation to match the, um, to, to first, you need to pass, pass the packet and do, do a lookup in, in your uh, foreign table to determine which port will be the next, next port to transmit packet. And for certifying folder, actually, instead of doing VXLAN GP encapsulation, it also need to do NSH manipulation. Specifically, you need to look up the, the, the NSH map and NSH entry table in the NSH SFC plugin to, ins to determine what the next hub will be. So that also introduced overhead. So as you can see, performance jump drops from 5.5 to 4.5. And uh, we also tried to co-locate the certifying forwarder, uh, so NSA with the SNET. For, for SNET, basically can easily achieve 10 gig line rate for small packet, 64 byte, byte small packet. But uh, adding the, those functionality here, in-cap solution, decap solution, actually drops the performance to three, three million packet per second. So it's not, this is not a app-to-app -app comparison. As you can see, different packet sites and maybe a different pack, uh, you know, uh, tunneling protocol. Some use VXLINE GPE, some use VXLINE, some use VXLINE along with NSH, but actually give, some, give you some insight that if you only have a one core and you need to do lots of job, actually performance will be not as good as the basic layer two cross-connect performance. And this is the end-to-end -end throughput of SFC solution on a single server. So basically we have two setup. 
the CV setup, which stands for container of ABP. So basically, the traffic generator sends the traffic directly to a, a container. And inside the container, we just uh, uh, inside kind of just run, run ABP, and it's configured to the layer two cross connect mode. So the packet comes in where Niantic PMD and directly forward the packet to the VPP where virtual user and the warehouse user um, pair. So virtual user is a user, is a, um, user space emulation of virtual um, parameterization uh, device. So it is purely in DBDK and uh, it actually uh, use, leverages the huge page um, to, as a shared memory between the, the warehouse user and the virtual user. So it can, uh, it, comparing to the these, these pairs in, in, in container uh, network, network, it has a lot of performance. For, so then this, and the CVC program actually had an additional container here. Um, so, so there will be one more um, traffic, uh, one more packet move between the VPP and the container. As you can see here, we just move packet from the container to VPP and the forward to the, uh, loop back that packet to the traffic generator via an ATM port. And here we had the additional container. So this VPP, instead of forward traffic to the traffic, uh, traffic generator, it will forward to, uh, via, forward to another container via another vhost retail port. So as you can see here, for CV test, and uh, this VPP is con con configured as the layer two course connect mode, and this VPP is configured as a layer three routing mode for six four pad, uh, four pad small packet, we can achieve 5.4 uh, you know, million packet per second. And if you use this setup, because the additional packet move here um, is not share, share mem it's a shared memory based, but uh, in order to provide uh, isolation support, so you need, need to add at least one memory copy from the host to container. So you can see here, it performed job to 3.9, 3.6, sorry. And if you want to you configure the VPP here and the VPP here um, to act as serve function or serve function forwarder, and you can see, you know, packet per, packet per second drops to the 1.06. So we tried to allocate um, more cores for this pair, but uh, in current testing, we found that we host user actually does not scale that well. Um, because um, you know, um, because um, there are some design issues here, and the, and the community in DBDK and the uh, VPP community, those two community are working on um, that, that issue. Okay. So function and performance option, ta option test. So the, in, in Fido, it has a CSIT testing framework. As you can hear, um, traffic generator um, and the two uh, DUTs. Oops. Uh, and, and so it actually can set up the VXLAN terminal between the traffic generator and the DUT1, and also a VXLAN terminal between the DUT1 and DUT2. So there are a couple of different configurations. First, you need to configure the IP and the routing and AIP tables in VBP. Basically, you need to do is just run a CLI command to configure this guy to set to, for, for the, the, the IP address here and the, and the, and the two point-to-point um, -point VXLAN terminal between the DUT1, DUT1, and the DUT1, the, and the traffic generator. And also then you, you need to configure the NSH map and entry tables inside the DUT1 to ensure it can act as either um, certifying forwarder, proxy, or whatever component um, in, in the data plane. So the, this has been integrated into the CSAT framework, and we are going to integrate that into the performance test from in CSIT. So going forward, when people submit a patch to the NSSFC plugin, it will automatically run the performance test to ensure there is no um, performance degradation introduced by the, that patch. Okay. Then we can use that to determine if that path is, you know, is good enough. So next one is about the open data SFC integration with VPP and NSSFC. So NSSFC plus VPP provide the data plan support. It, it has support four different types of uh, data plane component, but how to ensure ODISFC can work with them. So basically, um, as you can see here, um, ODL SFC supports um, Young model and the NoSpawn APIs, which allows you to config the model, the certifying folder, cert function, proxy, and the classifier. So if you can use, you can use the SFC GUI or RISC-CONF to invoke the NoSpawn API provided by server funding pro provider, 
And once those uh, API are invoked, the the configuration data uh, will be uh, will be stored in the data store. And the two monitors may be classified and may be rendered. We added it to the SF ODSFC uh, are going to be notified once there is a data update in the data store. So those two guys will invoke the NetConf Salesforce plugin to configure VPP-based network devices. So previously, the ODSFC only support OVS to act as certifying for the classify. Now, in order to, ins to ensure ODSFC can control VPP-based cert fun uh, cert function chain data plan component, we add those components and follows the overall ODL um, SFC architecture um, by providing those two components, okay. And in, in, in terms of the details of how it works, we actually um, leverage the Honeycomb and BBP's um, plugin framework. Basically, um, you know, we add those, um, you know, yellow box here, um, NS SFC plugin, which is the data plan component. And because the VPP is written in Java, uh, in C, and the Hanukkah is written in Java, so you need to uh, sort a layer to translate the Java core to C core, that is the, the responsibility of the JVPP com com component. And the JVP component here actually provides the NoSpond APIs uh, to the Honeycomb. And once the Honeycomb invoke this API, it will um, automatically invoke the um, six APIs defining NSSF plugin to ensure the NSSFC can configure the NSSF map and NSSF entry tables. And uh, on the top is the ODL's uh, two components as I mentioned, maybe renderer and the classifier. So it actually can, the VPP renderer actually mainly used to configure the VixLine GPC port as well as bridge domain in the VPP, in the, in the, in the native VPP. And this VPP classifier is used to config the two tables inside the NSSFC. So what, uh, just like how the ODSFC is implemented, the Honeycomb actually provides a data broker component, which actually write data to the two uh, data stores here. And once the data up, up, uh, uh, once there is a data update in those two data stores, the transi translation layer will be notified. They will um, actually uh, distribute the the cores to either Honeycomb core or Honeycomb NSS plugin. So that means we, it, it can configure either VPP um, native code, native graph node, or configure the NSSFC. So this is a is a full stack. So if people wanted to add additional plugins into VPP you can basically reuse lots of code here to add a, a plugins into VPP and into Honeycomb, okay? So no matter you, uh, you want to use uh, uh, NetVert or GPP because NetVert, GPP already supports the VPP by introducing a VPP renderer and the NetVert is going to add the VPP under uh, later on. So basically the, 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 the framework here can be largely reused. So, so summary, so first, High-performance NSSF based function solution can be can be enabled by integrating VPP and Open Daylight. Um, currently, in SSFC, only sample of and GP, as as we showed in previous slide, um, to support the different component, we need to do per hop Wixland GP and NSH decap solution followed by reincap solution, which actually kills performance because you need memory copy because you 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 need to look up additional tables. So we are trying to add the Ethernet as a transport bef um, uh, for, be before the header. So this kind of transport can actually um, benefit the server on chain deployment in a pure NF environment. Say if you, are, you deploy a server on chain on a single server, and uh, our, uh, you know, the server function and the server on chain are just a container or VM. So for that case, for this kind of east-west traffic, you don't have to use you know, heavyweight VXLAN GP as a transport. The only, the, 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 the only cho choice from high performance product is to use this kind of Ethernet as a transport to carry the NSA header. So it actually improves a lot of performance. And in coming 1707 release, we are going to add this support. And also, as I mentioned, we also use the performance is not good enough to support a massive east west traffic. It needs to be scalable. Um, you know, more scalable. I mean, say, if I can I allocate more huge page or more cores to 
to steer traffic between the uh, host uh, switch, like OVS or VPP, to the container or, or VM, then the warehouse user performance um, will be a bottleneck and it needs to be enhanced. And also open the light, SFC controls, data, controls uh, the data plane mixed with the VPP and the DPK OVS. The DPK OVS, actually at this point, it does not support NSH and uh, we are working with community to ensure NSH will be supported there and, uh, and our current goal is to enable NSH support in uh, OVS um, 2.8 risk in, in July, August timeframe. And uh, also container as a server on chain is also very important because um, you know, if we want to enable the uh, container, container as um, you know, serve function in, in uh, Intel key environment, container has a lot of benefit. For example, the boot up time is much shorter. Uh, we, we got some roughly um, data, for example, in, in order to instantiate a VM, um, it takes about uh, roughly 12 seconds. But if you start the container, it just take about you know, 1.5 seconds. So it's about 10x difference. So for some tech use case, like, like a EP, CPE use case, you may want to instantiate thousands of containers on a server, and you may want to just shut down them once they face the job, and for that case, VM does not work because you need a hypervisor, which induces overhead, and also in order to instantiate a VM, you need to start the, uh, you need the guest OS, the boot up, um, so that actually introduces lots of um, overhead and, uh, and, and, and the, and the you know, long, long boot up time. And also, um, comparing to the uh, VM performance, container does not have the roughly 5 or 80% overhead introduced by the hypervisor. So container lights the server function solution in telco environment, uh, environment will be um, very um, important going forward. Okay. So, but, the, but the, in, in container as a server function solution, there is no uh, OpenStack. And now OpenStack support actually uh, the uh, container as a serve, uh, you know, v uh, VNF, but uh, we want to enable, use Kubernetes to, to enable a um, bare metal container run to, to ensure it has the best performance. And also, uh, you know, current solution only has the ODL and the BBP to get together, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and there is, but there is no orchestration plan support like a resource orchestrator, like OpenStack, is not there. And, uh, and the SFC monitoring, like uh, uh, ONAP, is not there. ONAP currently does not support the complicated use case like server on chain. It only supports the simple use case. Um, so we are targeting to, in, to enable ONAP um, you know, to support uh, server on chain orchestration. Basically, some component like a, um, server design and creation component to support server function design. You need a, it's a graphic tool that allows you to model a server on chain and it supports Tosca and uh, different, uh, uh, AD, if it's an HC, um, you know, um, information model. Uh, we have for, for, graph for server function. So this kind of thing need to be enabled in SDC. And also uh, master service operator and the policy component need to support server function orchestration because currently in the OpenStack, it also has a server function solution, which is a networking SFC, um, support port chaining. And as I mentioned in, in previous slide, there are different use cases. Some use cases may need a dynamic chain, some will just a static chain. So we need to define some placement, we have placement or serve on chain placement policy to um, ensure the, on the, on the uh, orchestration layer it could support both network SFC and ODLS SFC. ODLS is relatively dynamic, which allows you to um, change the order to add or, uh, or remove serve sort of function to existing serve chain. And also SDNC um, and FPC, those two uh, controllers in ONAP actually are all ODL based. So we need them to control the data plan command like uh, unless they were VNFs. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Any question? FPC is not a data controller. Okay. Just to let you know. Okay, so, um, so there's a lot of uh, parts of the industry going into service function chaining. Yep. So would you classify there's two areas? One is the orchestrator world, yep. which is more IT focused, and one is the data world, which is sort of in this controller um, data networking plane. 
Yep. Arena, is that basically it, or is there, is there another? So now, if, if for, for example, ODL, SFC, basically the current classifier only supports uh, five tuple-based classification, okay. Be mainly because OpenFlow only supports layer two, layer four. So in order to enable ODL to control OVS-based classifier, it only allows you to set up the basic ACL rules, which is a five tuple base. But for VPP, actually lost a lot of flexibility. Say if you integrate DPI engine into the VPP, and that DPI engine can do layer two, layer four to layer um, seven um, packet inspection, then you can add easily add a, add a control plane, um, you know, um, APIs in the, old, in the Honeycomb to allow the control plane like ODL or ONOS to, conf to config the layer four to layer seven classification rules. Say, if you say, for media traffic, go to this chain. For FTP traffic, go to that chain. So, but without the DPI engine in your classifier, you cannot do that at this time. So we are trying to say, okay, use, o use ODL with VPP. Um, in comparison to ODL to control over a space to classify, it actually has lots of flexibility. At least, at least to, enable, to enable the layer four to layer seven classification capability in the data plane. Okay. Yep. So um, in the previous talk, we saw um, a couple different options for how to integrate VPP in with Open Daylight yep. and um, with Honeycomb. I'm just wondering, how does the SFC integration fit into that? Does the SFC functionality in Netvert also, or is it possibly going into Netvert, or just yeah. what are your plans there? That, that's a great question. That actually, that's a question that uh, applies to OVS-based uh, data plan as well, um, previously in ODL community. So basically, um, the group of base policy and Netvert, those two open, open data projects, only controls the main VPP native code, native graph node. And actually, o Honeycomb already provides support there, for example, if you want to config VBP uh, to act as a firewall, to do um, uh, ACL, to do QoS, those kind of things, VBP already support there. So you can use a legacy um, Honeycomb no spawn API to do that kind of thing. But if you want to control the NSH SFC plugin, then the ODL SFC only invoke the, let me show you this. Let, let's see here, only invoke the APIs provided by this guy, um, Honeycomb and City plugin. Okay, so, and there's some discussion in the ODA community in terms of let, let's use the NetVert or GBP to control the third function classifier. For that case, then the, the, the VBP, VBP and the, uh, uh, the, the GBP and the NetVert need to directly invoke the API here to ensure it can control the NSH SAP plugin to act as classify. But if you want to enable total search function solution, say if you want to control search function folder and a proxy, and I don't think the GBP and the NetVert has that capability because it does not have, have a search function model. It only controls the classifier. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, the SFC model as it currently stands um, says that to complete the, the processing of the entire function chain, yep. you know, even if you're wanting to do you know, you know, per packet processing, um, you just do that one packet, that packet will be hopping about from machine to machine to machine to machine yep. to complete the function chain. Given the, kind of the, the, the concept of VPP and VPP's own kind of, it's like an internal service graph, have you considered a more radical sort of interpretation of FSC within VPP, where the entire SFC chain gets run to completion within a single VPP instance. C could you repeat your question? I didn't quite understand that. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, I guess it's, it, it. so where SFC as it currently stands, as you know, packets come in, and you classify them, and they hop from machine A to machine B, to yep, yep, all the yep, functions. Yep. VPP is kind of doing something similar in, instead, where a you know, packet comes in, yep. and then it gets run you know, to completion lots of different, you know, all the different nodes within the, the VPP graph. Yeah. So have you considered a model for SFC within VPP that kind of maps the, the kind of overall SFC processing into VPP to, you know, to run the complete SFC chain just within a single VPP instance? You mean in a single instance to the everything? 
right? Yeah. So that actually can work, but um, I think it does not scale. Say, for example, um, I, I need a I sign a SLA with customers. I want to create a silver chain with 10 gig line rate. So, for example, for that case, maybe you can we can make it work. But how about 100 gig, 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 gig? You know, you you may have a this load balancer to to load balancing the 100 gig um, traffic to 10 servers. Each server does just the 10 gig. For that case, basically you can work. But uh, sometimes, if if the static chain, for example, I have a CP use case. The first node is always um, you know BNG. The next is always um, you know uh, firewall. The third is a um, say rerouter. If it has that static chain, basically you can easily configure VPP to do that kind of thing. But how about if I want to change the order? And how about if I, I want to add additional function, and that additional function is not actually implemented in VPP, it's provided by another vendor, say so another a deep engine. For that case, it's very hard to enable that. So, I mean, if you want to in, implement a pure VPP based front chain, and all these functions are developed based on DBK or, or, or VPP, theoretically you can do that thing. And actually, it's kind of actually best performance because you don't have to move packet between VMs, between containers on a single server, or move packet between different servers. That actually has, has best performance. But for open source, we can do it that way. But for real deployment, for operator, they may have different VMs from different vendors in different format. Some are containers, some are uh, you know KVM based VM, some are Zen based VM. You cannot do that thing. So actually, in ODL, basically. It support both as a country plane or it also implement can support both. But in terms of how to map a third function model to a data plane model, actually we want the policy component, for example, in ONAP, to allow you to say create server function, deploy server function, use VMP on a single server. And also you can specify policy, say I want to deploy server chain on a single rack or different server chain cross data center. So if you have different policy, and then orchestrator can actually deploy those VNF or PNF on different location, and also map the virtual link between those third function to the overlay network connection and the underlay network connection. And that is a you know, broad topic. You know, uh, we, we, we cannot talk about that at this point. But, uh, and uh, still answer questions, yes, it, 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 it can, but it has had certain limitations. Okay. okay, thank you.